So I've built a few PCs on the channel, but I've never really gone in depth of like a build guide, like how I assemble PCs. Like I'm sure you can find a bunch of other people, how they assemble things, but I've never really shown off how I like to do it. And I think that may be valuable, or at least for people who don't know how to do it in general, um, I can kind of help guide them on things that they're missing out on. So that's what I'm gonna do. Now the first thing I like to do, these cases are always such pain to open. So I really like to get my pickaxe, and then I take it and I, uh... Okay, so the first thing that's easiest for me to start working on is the motherboard, CPU, RAM, and CPU cooler. So the first thing I like to do is I like to get everything on my motherboard ready. This is the CPU, the motherboard itself, obviously, the RAM, and the CPU cooler, if I can. Really depends on what kind of cooler we have, but for this one, we absolutely can pre-mount it. Now, before we do anything, really want to go ahead and consult your manual okay this thing right here is very important it'll let you know how your ram should be configured it's very popular for motherboards to have what's called dual channel memory and that means there's essentially if you have only two sticks if you don't have four there's two spots you specifically want to put the ram into and there's two spots that you should only really do if you're occupying all four of them now i do happen to be working with a ryzen build and the way that this motherboard is configured is, if I take this CPU off real quick, the way that this bad boy is configured is that there's a little diamond on both the CPU and on the motherboard to indicate where you put it. Depending on what year your parts are from and depending on if it's Intel or AMD, you may have these pins on your CPU or on your motherboard. Right here we have them on our CPU. Now you wanna be really careful not to bend these and you just kind of place it in and it should sink in. You don't have to force it or really do much effort at all. Like you can actually kind of just like wiggle it on place until it goes in. And then it'll lock in uh, and very, very gently wiggle it. And then you just put this little arm down. It, it won't feel like you're really forcing anything and then you're good. For RAM, we do a very similar thing. It is incredibly easy to install this. Essentially, our RAM sticks, depending on your motherboard, you may have two little clips or one little clip per uh, slot. So you just wiggle it out. These pins, one is larger than the other. So it only goes in one way. You just kind of sink one end in and then the other one. And you just kind of push it and the clips will go down with it. And then the CPU cooler. Now what I like to do is before I even mount our CPU cooler with our thermal paste on or whatever sort of compound you're going for, I like to test fit it and make sure that this is going to fit how I want it and that I have it configured to my liking. I think that's pretty much about how I want to install it. So I'm going to go ahead and get our thermal paste ready. Now, depending on your hardware setup, you may want to use more or less thermal paste. This is a pretty uh, heavily debated and almost controversial topic. Uh, how much thermal paste do you want to use? It's kind of hard to do too little and it's kind of hard to do too much. Uh, too little won't cover all the surface area, whatever we mush the cooler down and too much will ooze out onto the motherboard and uh, be very bad. So definitely don't do that. But it's like, it's kind of hard to do both of those. Really what I like to do is, depending on the chipset, I normally just make a line. Sometimes I'll do a zigzag if I need any more, and if I need less, I'll do a P. And once you're done, make sure you don't get any all over the place. Uh, depending on what kind of thermal compound you're using, it may actually gunk stuff up and short circuit it. So be careful of that. Then I can go ahead and plug this into any header that is labeled CPU fan. This will be four pins on the motherboard most likely. Ta-da. Next thing I like to work on is the case. So I'm gonna go ahead and take both the back and front panel off. Now that I have the panels off, I can either go ahead and install the power supply or I can mount the motherboard. I think the easiest thing for me right now to do is to actually install the motherboard. Depending on your case, 
and some cases for whatever reason don't have like very good clearance for the power supply and you kind of need to do that first uh, mine should be fine so I'm gonna go ahead and do the motherboard that should be the easiest to do so your case will probably come with some accessories this right here is my USB header because I have USB 3 ports on the front I think I actually have more than that but this will go into our motherboard all of these will go into our motherboard and this case fan will go into our motherboard as well, but we can just kind of move them out of the way for right now. Okay, so depending on how your case is set up, you may have these pre-installed, but what I want to focus on right now are these things right here. These are called motherboard standoffs. Kind of what they do is for one, it's like a good universal way of mounting a motherboard. Some cases have different bins and bows and stuff like that. This kind of helps keep it level. And also I think it helps make sure that you don't like short circuit anything. Like the pins on the back of the motherboard can be really fragile and elevating it up to where they don't like accidentally hit things can help quite a bit. Something you can go ahead and do right now is install our IO shield. We just kind of push it in there. And then once it's in, you'll just screw it in. I went ahead and plugged in some of these loose cables. So before I lose anyone, I wanna explain what I did. Now, a lot of this is going to be very dependent on both your case and your motherboard. This right here is my audio. This comes from the case into the motherboard. Check your manual. This right here is a system fan. There's two right here and one right there. This one is plugged in here. This one is plugged in over here. And this one is plugged in right there. There's four pins on the board and depending on how you have it set, well, this is all depending on how you have it set up. For this one, there's four pins on the board and three that actually plug in. There's like a little plastic piece that'll help you align where you need it to go though. This right here is a uh, reset and power. This is specific to this motherboard and this case. Check your manual. This right here is our USB cable. All these will change depending on the layout of your motherboard and your case. This is exactly what I mean. This is what I mean by check your motherboard and check the manual, okay? This says exactly where to put specific plugs into where. It's all labeled. This is in the manual for the motherboard I'm using. Here is our power supply. This is fully modular, which means that there's no cables that have to be in here at once. It's very easy to cable manage. They are a little more expensive. The three main types that I'm aware of is you just have a normal power supply, which has everything hardwired into it. You can't remove anything. Then you have semi-modular, which has most of them you can remove. And then you have fully modular, which you can remove everything. They're all just a little clip on. Now, this would be really different depending on your config, but obviously we want the power supply itself. This is the actual wall outlet uh, plug. This right here is for our CPU. This is for our 28 pin for our motherboard. This brings power to the motherboard specifically. This is specifically for the CPU. This right here is for a SATA, so for our SSD that we'll be installing. And this right here is for our graphics card. There's two ends on both of them. One goes into here, the other goes into the computer. Nowadays, the way that cases and power supplies are set up, they're mostly meant for the fan to go down at the bottom and to act as uh, an exhaust. Depending on your setup, you may want to flip it up. It's not really a big deal. Like it doesn't change how you screw it in really at all or how you install it. So if you know your use case, feel free to change it up. But for me, I am going to install it that way. Here's a bit of a side note. For whatever reason, sometimes I have trouble screwing in power supplies. I have to wiggle them a lot. A lot of this stuff with your computer, try to get a second person. You'll save a ton of time. That literally just took me like 10 minutes to put in four screws. Since we're already at the back of the PC, I'm going to go ahead and take my solid state drive and install it. This case has two mounts on the back, two on the front. And because this is a solid state drive, I don't know if you guys know this, but you can pretty much put it wherever you want. Like if I wanted, to literally just like shove it in here. If I could get it to fit, as long as it didn't get really hot, it probably would be fine. Or if I want to put it here, if I want to just tape it onto the back. A hard drive has mechanical parts and they're pretty fat, fragile. They have like platters and they spin and it's kind of easy to throw them off. Whereas this is flash based. There's nothing in it that moves. So it can be a lot more flexible in terms of mounting. Now, if I go ahead and move this power cable out of the way, 
You can probably tell this right here is SATA power that we need for the SSD and this is a SATA cable which goes onto the motherboard. This comes from the power supply. All right, this part's a little complicated but I'm gonna try to go through it pretty quickly. This right here has the most pins. This is for your motherboard. This up here has eight, it's for your CPU. This right here are our SATA connectors. This right here is the power for our graphics card. I'm going to go ahead and install the graphics card now. Now, if you're building a gaming computer, the graphics card is incredibly important, but it's actually really simple to install. This thing right here, you pretty much put it in just like RAM. You have two little slots right here, and they correspond only to one way, and you put it in your PCI slot. You're gonna wanna pick whichever one has the most bandwidth. Normally, these are denoted by uh, X16 or X8. Generally, it's whatever your top big thing is. That top slot's normally free for like an expansion slot or something. And we don't need that. So, we're gonna put that back in. Ta-da! And then once I'm done plugging everything in, I like to try to tidy up the cables just a little bit. I am going to add a hard drive in the future, so this isn't going to be incredibly tight and well managed, but it's just enough to kind of have it routed a little bit. I made sure not to have everything too cluttered, but it's still a little loose, so it won't be a pain for me to do that. And that's really it. Look at that, look at that computer. Let me, let me bring some light in. Uh, too much light. Thing looks great. Good job. You made a computer too? Good job, you did it. Proud of you.